What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic and today we're reviewing the LG HU915QB 4K Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector. And if you've never heard of an Ultra Short Throw Projector, also known as a laser TV, I'll throw a link in the video description to some videos to bring you up to speed. So this is LG's latest 4K Ultra Short Throw and it's the successor to the older HU85LA from a few years ago. So as some of you know, earlier this year I had the pleasure of being a judge in the 2022 Laser TV Showdown hosted by Projector screen.com and projector central and the lg hu 915 qb was the second place winner for the triple laser category behind the first place winner which was the four movie theater now even though the four movie is a great projector that i recommend to people all the time the lg is personally my favorite ultra short throw right now but that comes with a little bit of an asterisk that i'll talk about later in the video and there are actually two versions of this projector. There's the HU915QB, which is black, and the HU915QE, which is white. And aside from the difference in color, they have a few more differences. First, the HU915QB retails for a whopping 6,500 bucks, and the QE costs a little less, being priced at 6,000. The other differences are brightness and color accuracy. The 915QB produces up to 3,000 lumens, covering nearly 100% of DCI-P3, while the 915QE produces up to 3,700 lumens covering 94% of DCI-P3. So if you're looking for something really bright, you can go with the QE. And if you want something a little more color accurate and you're willing to sacrifice a little brightness, you can grab the QB. I'll talk a little bit about the QE later in the video, but most of this video is gonna focus on the more expensive version, which is the 915 QB. All right, so what does this $6,500 projector look like? Well, most of you know I prefer ultra short throw projectors to be black, so I was instantly partial to the 915 QB. It has an overall design very similar to the older HU85, LA. It has black fabric in the front hiding 40 watt internal speakers. They move the power button to the bottom center of the projector so you'll find that hiding up under the front. The top of course contains the recessed lens as well as the focus dial which is hidden behind a small door. And even though I used to prefer digital focus, I found that over the past couple years I actually prefer the manual focus dial as I find it much easier to get the focus dialed in compared to using a remote. The sides of the projectors are reserved for ventilation. There are four adjustable feet on the bottom, which is 100% necessary considering how close this thing sits to the screen, since it can be a little tricky to get it lined up. And like most projectors, the ports are on the back. It comes with three HDMI ports, with two HDMI 2.0B ports, and one HDMI 2.1 port. It also has two USB ports, an optical audio out, and an ethernet port. The main thing that sets the HU915 apart from the other ultra short throws is that it uses the larger 0.66 inch DLP chip. So instead of using a chip with full HD resolution and shifting four times to display a 4K image, this DLP chip only needs to pixel shift twice, which results in a razor sharp image. Now this does come with a disadvantage though, which I'll talk about later in the video. And with the QB and QE being so similar, I've highlighted the 915 QE differences in blue so you can see the differences. Both projectors Projectors have an amazing 19 to 1 throw ratio, producing a 100 inch image from less than 4 inches from the screen, and it can produce a screen anywhere from 90 to 120 inches. And since it has an HDMI 2.1 port with eARC, you can use this port to send lossless Dolby Atmos to your home theater receiver. So the screen I use to test these projectors is the 100 inch Spectra Vantage CLR screen, which is the same screen we used in the Laser TV showdown earlier this year. This is a great screen that does a nice job of rejecting ambient light in the room, and pairs perfectly with the LG with its really low throw ratio and pretty much every other ultra short throw projector I've tested. And if you're interested in buying this screen or any of the other projectors mentioned in this video, be sure to use the links in the video description from our channel affiliate projectorscreen.com. They have great deals on all of these projectors and even offer screen bundle deals when you buy a projector. Now I think I've said this in every single LG projector review, but I think WebOS might be my favorite projector operating system. It's snappy, well-designed, and makes the projector feel like a TV, since all the elements are easy to read and laid out in a way that makes sense. You get access to all your favorite streaming apps, including Netflix, which is a rarity nowadays. You also get a ton of picture control options, which makes this projector much easier to calibrate compared to some of the other projectors out there. And this brings us to my favorite projector remote, which is LG's Magic Remote. Now I've talked about this enough in the past, so I won't bore you with all this thing can do, but the Magic Remote is backlit and has a ton of buttons, including shortcut buttons to picture control as well as app controls. The Magic Remote has the unique ability to make your projector feel like a smart TV, which is rare with most projector remotes. 
And when it comes to picture modes, you get several picture modes on this projector with separate modes for SDR and HDR content. For SDR content, I found that I prefer standard mode during the day and cinema mode at night. Now I will say that almost every mode requires a bit of tweaking since the image has a noticeably blue hue to it. And vivid mode is insanely blue to a point where it's kind of ridiculous and it even somehow produces over 4,000 lumens in this mode, which is far beyond LG's 3,000 lumen claim on the 915 QB. The rest of the modes were pretty close to 3,000 lumens with cinema and filmmaker mode being the darkest, but providing the most accurate image. It has an iris setting which allows you to lower the overall brightness, but the lower brightness setting is super blue and doesn't look good, so I recommend leaving it at its brightest setting. I found that setting the white balance to warm and bumping the red while dropping the blue and green balance seemed to improve the image quite a bit, but there are endless options for you to go crazy and get the perfect image if you want. So when I say this projector is sharp, I mean it's noticeably sharper than the others. It's not just sharp, it has fantastic focus uniformity, which also seemed to be a bit better than the competing projectors. And when it comes to brightness in the daytime, the 915 QB did a great job with SDR content, outperforming projectors with similar brightness claims. That being said, the 915 QE was even brighter and worked even better during the middle of the day in my bright living room where every extra lumen counts. Now it did take a bit of tweaking to get the 915 QE's colors where I wanted them to be, but once I made a few tweaks I found the image to perform well in my room as long as there was no direct sunlight. And the HDR performance was absolutely fantastic from the 915 QB. Cinema HDR mode looked the best in a dark room with the brighter modes of course looking better during the day. Now like most ultra short throws, neither the 915 QB or the QE look great in a super bright room with HDR, but in a moderately lit room, both projectors have enough brightness as long as it's not sitting right next to a window at high noon. But once the lights go off, I think most people will be impressed by the HDR performance of this projector. Even though it doesn't beat the contrast of some of the competing ultra short throws, the contrast seems like it's just right when watching movies and you can always adjust the dynamic contrast setting to suit your personal taste. Now when it comes to color accuracy, I think it's important to mention that some of the other triple laser ultra short throw projectors have a higher color accuracy than the 915 QB, but with a near 100% coverage of DCI-P3, it's not something that I could notice without special equipment. The colors, contrast, and black levels from this projector are out outstanding and it provides a movie watching experience that's hard to beat. And speaking of black levels, I do have to say that the bar was set pretty high by the older HU85LA, which had stellar black levels. Well, even though neither the 915 QB or QE are quite on that level, it still has pretty good black levels. Even in its brightest mode, I never found the black levels to look bad and the shadows and dark scenes in movies never appeared gray or washed out. The next category is actually one of the shortfalls of this projector and that's gaming. Even though 4K games look absolutely fantastic, it unfortunately has input lag that's too high for any fast paced or competitive gaming. I measured the input lag at 79 milliseconds which is far too slow for me to play Call of Duty without frustration. Now if you're just a casual gamer who plays racing games or anything that doesn't require super fast reaction, you'll love how the games look from either of these projectors, but input lag is definitely not its strong suit which I'll elaborate on a little bit later. And this brings us to the built-in 40 watt speakers. I think the speakers in this projector far outperform the speakers in the older HU85LA, which felt super tiny and lacked depth. These speakers have fairly decent range, even though like most projector speakers, they lack bass. So if you're just watching TV shows or watching something that's not really immersive, the speakers are just fine, but for movies, I would definitely recommend home theater speakers for the best experience. When it comes to projector noise, I was thankful that the 915 QB and QE don't have the laser wine issue that I experienced with the HU85LA. The only time I could really hear it was during really bright scenes with the sound off or turned down. Okay, so the LG HU915QB is clearly a fantastic projector, but like all products, it's not perfect. So this is the section of the video I call caveats, where I talk about things I don't like or things that could be better. And the first issue is input lag. Now I did expect the input lag to be a bit higher than the other ultra short throws, since these projectors used a larger 0.66 inch DLP chip, but even the 67 millisecond input lag reported by other reviewers in game mode is still a bit too high for competitive gaming. Another issue I noticed was rainbow effect. Now oddly enough, LG's laser imaging system, which lacks a color wheel, is actually supposed to eliminate rainbows, but I was able to see it when quickly moving my eyes across the screen. Now that being said, it didn't take away from my personal viewing experience, so I'm not gonna hold that against it. 
And the last concern I have is that these projectors do not have an eye protection sensor. Now this is obviously not gonna be an issue for everyone, but I do have a two year old running around the house and considering you're paying at least $6,000 for one of these projectors, I definitely think you should have some sort of eye protection. Now, before I end this video, I know I have to talk a little bit about how it compares to the four movie theater, considering that's the projector that won the shootout and it's a highly recommended projector. So why do I prefer the LG over the four movie? Well, this is completely my own personal subjective opinion, but I think the sharpness is a major aspect of a 4K projector or even a TV for that matter. And there's a very noticeable difference between the four movie and the LG. Now the full movie doesn't look terrible or anything, but when you compare the sharpness to the LG, it's really no contest. The clarity and focus uniformity is much better. And the other thing is brightness. On paper, the LG HU915QB is only slightly brighter than the full movie, but the sample unit I had produced about 2100 lumens in its brightest usable mode, which is a lot dimmer than the 2900 lumens I got from the LG in standard mode. Considering these projectors are advertised as TV replacements, I think brightness is super important considering you might be viewing it in the middle of the day in a bright room. Okay, so what about cost? Well, this is why I still recommend the full movie to most people, even though the LG is my favorite. 6,500 bucks without a screen is quite a bit of money, even for the added benefits of this projector. Now, if money is no object, then the 915 QB is a no-brainer, but if you're an average guy scraping up pennies to try to afford the already expensive $3,000 for movie, then I think you might be happier spending less than half and going that route. So like I say with everything else, it really comes down to personal preference and weighing the good against the bad. And again, if you're interested in buying any of the items mentioned in this video, consider using the affiliate links in the video description as that helps the channel and allows me to continue to bring you more content. And I'm seeing a bunch of people asking my thoughts on the AWOL Ultra Short Throw Projector, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on my review of that. I'm also working on my LS11000 review as well as a few others. So make sure you mash that like button if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.